All right, good evening. This is uh, December 14th, 2020, and I'm Justin Williams Avoy. Um, so welcome to my YouTube channel, and what I'm going to talk about tonight is uh, these little booklets um, that I got in an old church that I used to attend to. It was a Presbyterian um, Reformed, Orthodox Presbyterian, actually. Um, these are books written by R.C. Sproul. The Supreme Paradox The philosopher Blaise Pascal called man the supreme paradox because, compared to all other creatures, he is both the most magnificent and the most miserable. What did Pascal mean? The answer goes to the heart of what the Bible says about man. Man is created in the image of God, but the Bible also tells us that man has fallen into sin and become corrupt. In Are People Basically Good, Dr. R.C. Sproul explores the nature of mankind by looking at what it means to be made in the image of God and exploring the nature and effects of the fall. The Crucial Question booklet series by Dr. R.C. Sproul offers succinct treatments of important issues for Christians and thoughtful inquirers. Dr. R.C. Sproul, founder and chairman of Ligonier Ministries, is known for his ability to communicate the deep truths of the Christian faith. He is a counselor of the Reformation Bible College and serves as the co-pastor of St. Andrew's Chapel in Sanford, Florida, and teaches on the daily radio program Renewing Your Mind. Uh, he has written more than 100 books. So yeah, these look... Um, look pretty good to me back in the day and so I grabbed them and I just wanted to share them with you. I've been kind of doing some reformed stuff um, lately and on the channel I am going to resume um, some traditionalist topics and some other literature in the western canon and whatnot but I thought tonight I was just kind of in the mood and this has been the stuff I've been reading my personal reading so why not. I haven't been able to get a lot of reading done. Um, three of my sons are here. Um, so as we're moving towards the holiday season and kids here are doing homeschool because of uh, the pandemic and whatnot. So um, anyways, I just thought I'd take a quick moment to um, upload a video. Um, so the Crucial Question series by R.C. Sproul. Who is Jesus? Can I trust the Bible? Does prayer change things? Can I know God's will? How should I live in this world? What does it mean to be born again? Can I be sure I am saved? What is faith? What can I do with my guilt? What is the Trinity? What is baptism? Can I have joy in my life? Who is the Holy Spirit? Does God control everything? How can I develop a Christian conscience? What is the Lord's Supper? What is the church? What is repentance? What is the, the relationship between church and state? Are there are, are these the last days? What is the Great Commission? Can I lose my salvation? How should I think about money? How can I be blessed? Are people basically good? Are people basically good? R.C. Sproul. <clears throat> so here's the contents. The Supreme Paradox, the image of God, the duality of man, the reality of our sin, uh, the depth of our sin and the extent of our sin. The Supreme Paradox. In our days, the attempts to understand what it means to be human do not begin with the scripture, but rather proceed from the worldly perspective. The most common definition for a human being or for what it means to be human is the scientific name Homo sapiens meaning wise man. This term in distinguishing man from all other creatures in the animal kingdom does, does so in terms of intelligence or wisdom. In almost every era of Western civilization, philosophers and theologians have zeroed in on man's thinking capacity as a unique element in his identity. In early centuries of Greek philosophical inquiry, the overarching concern was the dimension called metaphysics, meaning that which is above or beyond the physical world. Thales, Parmenides, Anaximander, um, Anaxagoras, and others before Socrates, Plato, and Aristotle were asking big questions such as the ultimate substance from which everything comes in the universe. What is the essence of things? 
what stands above and beyond the physical. These philosophers couldn't agree on what the ultimate reality is. Plato said that the transcendent world of forms or ideas, Aristotle said it is the essence embedded with the physical form. Ultimately, thinkers questioned the fact that different philosophers, each acute in their thinking, came to radically different conclusions about issues of metaphysics. Thus, the next great emphasis in philosophy was in the discipline called epistemology, which is the theory of knowing that undergirds all science. It is a study of the question, how do we know what we know? The focus is on how we learn how we can do, know anything, whether we know principally through the activity of the mind or through observation and related questions. <clears throat> it's cool the mention of the pre-Socratics there. Like that... What is repentance? What does it mean to repent? Can we be saved if we don't repent? Does the command to repent and scripture mean that we aren't saved through faith alone? Does true repentance mean we never commit the same sin again? As we consider Jesus' call to repent and believe the gospel, we often find ourselves asking these questions and many others. Dr. R.C. Sproul examines the biblical concept of repentance as a turning from one's old way of life. He holds up the biblical models of repentance and considers repentance as it relates to being born again, helping to understand what, the tr what true repentance looks like. The Crucial Questions booklet series by R.C. Sproul offers succinct treatments of important issues for Christians and thoughtful inquirers. <clears throat> <laughs> Try to open this with one hand here. Okay. What is repentance? A picture of repentance. A model of repentance. Regeneration and repentance. What is repentance? Have you ever been asked what you would do differently if you had your life to live over again? It amazes me when people respond that they wouldn't do anything differently. I simply can't imagine someone not having anything they want to change. Don't we all have regrets? Certainly, as Christians who understand our sin, we would relish the chance to relive some of our past. Perhaps we have words we loved, we'd love to take back, or painful scenes we'd like to rewrite. The desires that hint at our need for repentance. It is vitally important that we understand the biblical concept of repentance. It is central not only to the New Testament, but to all scripture. The Gospel of Mark begins with the appearance of John the Baptist, who comes out of the wilderness announcing the approach of the kingdom of God. His message is to the people of Israel was very simple. He called them to repentance. Just a short time after this, Jesus began his ministry preaching the exact same message. Now after John was arrested, Jesus came into Galilee proclaiming the gospel of God and saying, The time is fulfilled and the kingdom of God is at hand. Repent and believe the gospel. Mark 1, 14-15 What is the Lord's Supper? That we might partake with understanding. The evangelical church is deeply confused over the sacrament of the Lord's Supper, with many believers being unclear as to what happens at the Lord's table. In some churches, it is practiced infrequently or irrelevant, rever, uh, irreverentially. In this booklet, Dr. R.C. Sproul cuts through the confusion to define the supper, demonstrate what it means to show how important it is for the lives of believers and churches. He explores the origins of the supper, explains what it does for us, and refutes erroneous views of the sacrament. Here is a teaching that will enhance the reader's appreciation for the work of Christ that is pictured in the bread and wine. The Crucial Questions booklet series by R.C. Sproul offers succinct treatments of important issues for Christians and thoughtful inquirers. <clears throat> What is the Lord's Supper? Contents The significance of the Passover The institution of the Lord's Supper The consummation of the kingdom Real body and blood? Question mark. The natures of Christ The presence of Christ The blessing and judgment The significance of the Passover At the very heart of the life of worship of the early Christian community was the celebration of the Lord's Supper 
In the early days of church history, the celebration of Holy Communion was known by different names. On the one hand, the church used to come together and celebrate what they called the Agape Feast, or the Love Feast, in which they celebrated the love of God and the love that had enjoined with one another Christians in this Holy Supper. The sacrament was called the Lord's Supper because it made reference to the Last Supper that Jesus had with his disciples in the upper room on the night before his death. In the early church and later, the Lord's Supper was called the Eucharist, taking this definition from the Greek verb eukristo, eucharisto, which is the Greek verb that means to thank. Thus, one facet of the Lord's Supper has been gathering of the people of God to express the gratitude for what Christ accomplished in their behalf in his death. Here's something else I marked here. It is clear that the apostolic community saw the link between the death of Christ and the Old Testament Passover celebration. Who is the Holy Spirit? Getting back to basics about the Holy Spirit, the topic of the Holy Spirit sparks so much interest these days, but also much confusion thanks to the extra-biblical assertions about the Spirit's person and work. Numerous ideas abound as to who the Spirit truly is, how he operates in time and space, and what he does. In this booklet, Dr. R.C. Sproul cuts through the confusion by going back to the Bible. He establishes the biblical teaching on the Spirit's identity. He is one of the three persons of the Godhead, along with the Father and the Son, then briefly sketches some of the important tasks that the Spirit carries out. He shows that the Spirit gives new life to unbelievers and that he sanctifies, strengthens, teaches, and anoints God's people for ministry. The Crucial Question booklet series by Dr. R.C. Sproul offers succinct treatment of important issues for Christians and thoughtful inquirers. Who is the Holy Spirit? Contents. The third person, the life giver, the advocate, the sanctifier, the anointer, the illuminator. When I became a Christian in September of 1957, I found myself in a serious quandary. I was engaged to be married, but when I told my fiance about my conversion, she, she thought I had lost my mind. That was upsetting enough, but I also was learning that I should not marry a non-believer, and so I began to wonder whether it would be able to marry the woman I loved. Several months passed with no resolution to the dilemma. Finally, spring break approached. My fiancé was planning to go home to Pittsburgh from the college where she was studying. And I persuaded her to stop at my college, attend a campus Bible study with me, and then spend the night in the girls' dorm. I cannot remember anything for which I spent more time praying. I spent virtually the whole day before she arrived on my knees praying that God would work in her life. I came to the conclusion that if she did not soon become a Christian, I would have to break the engagement. As much as I did not want to do so, we went to Bible study that night, and she sat through the whole thing without saying a word. Afterward, I took her to the girl's dorm, and she was still very quiet. However, the next morning, when I met her, she came out as if she were walking on air. She told me that she had had a hard time sleeping because something had happened to her in the night before. She kept waking up in the night, pinching herself and asking, Do I still have it? Each time she told herself, Yes, I still have it, and went back to sleep. She had been converted to Christ through the study of the scriptures the night before. One of my clearest memories of that wonderful morning is the moment when we were getting into my car and she was telling me about her experience. She looked at me with great excitement and said, Now I know who the Holy Spirit is. Of course she had attended church for years, but she had heard the Holy Spirit mentioned. She had heard the benediction pronounced in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. But now for the first time she had the sense of who the Spirit really is. That statement of my fiancé, who is now my wife, was very significant. Notice that she said, Now I know who the Holy Spirit is, not I know what the Holy Spirit is. In her conversion, she made transition from understanding Christianity in an abstract sense to understanding the personal relationship with God. And one of the first truths she grasped was the Holy Spirit is a person and not a thing. So, yeah, these are books. They're probably still available, these booklets, I would assume. 
um, let's find, let's look here. So here is uh, reformationtrust.com. So that's where I would look if you wanted to find out more about these. I would like to have the rest of these little booklets. Um, you know, some of you know my story and that I lost a big portion of my library, um, which was a grievous thing indeed. However, I managed to hold on to these small booklets that I had gotten from a church uh, shortly um, around the time when I was going through a horrible divorce. So um, I have good memories of that little church there, and I enjoyed it quite a bit. I am not attending any current churches at this time. Um, however, I just want to share some of my um, passion for Reformation theology and um, Calvinism. And um, so I, that's what I've been doing lately. And some of you guys saw some of my uh, Orthodox, my Eastern Orthodox uh, material that I shared before. And um, I will resume on doing stuff from the Western canon. Probably just about whatever suits my fancy since this is my YouTube uh, channel after all. Um, and I hope that you'll enjoy it. So uh, this is Justin Savoy. And as always, I can be reached at uh, SavoyJustin123 at gmail.com. That's S-U-V-O-Y-J-U-S-T-I-N at gmail.com. Also, you could um, go ahead and email me that way if you want to find out how to support the channel. Um... I am hoping to do some more teaching series where I will actually be featured on the videos, but this has been what's been going on of late is little book reviews and I have been enjoying them and I'll be uploading them to other platforms such as BookTube and um, some other video platforms. So if you enter my name, J-U-S-T-I-N-S-U-V-O-Y, Justin Savoy, in your favorite search and then you're bound to find um, other material um, by and about me. Thank you so much for joining me on this December evening. Uh, stay safe, and uh, I hope to, um, God willing, upload more material soon. All right, goodbye.